Robert family, how's every single one of you? Welcome to another episode of our show, Jean Paul Egg, myself Juanzo. We are gonna give you like the best in analysis, the best on like everything that happened on NXT Vengeance Day. Uh, a show that like NXT doesn't, they took away the takeover name, Paul. And it makes sense because it doesn't feel like a takeover. It feels like just like you said, glorify house show for NXT. I mean, the guys try, but like, do they ever, can they replicate what NXT used to be in the glory days? Probably not. So let's hear it from you. What are your thoughts about this show? Yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, it was a stacked show. They definitely put, I would say, almost all of, you know, some of their best talent, maybe some names here and there that you and I liked that were left off or whatever. But, you know, they had a lot of great talent, at least that they have available in the NXT brand. I'm not saying in all of wrestling, but, you know, on the NXT roster, they put it on here and some of the matches were good. Some of them, eh. Like I said, overall to me, this felt like just if you're watching the glory days of NXT, this just felt like a three-hour episode of NXT. Yeah. Like you yeah. said, it didn't feel like a takeover. There was no, oh my God, this match. I mean, some of the matches, maybe they had the spots and they had the this and that that were takeover worthy, but they didn't it didn't feel it for whatever reason no you're right you're right so like, we're gonna absolutely talk about everything thank you to every single one of you that is watching always you know supporting the videos thank you for everything that you did for like the royal rumble we had a great video thank you for everybody that supported that said hey man you know the show is good we enjoyed it and every single time that you guys are on i'm always checking it out so thank you for that paul and you know the show started out with the north american championship this probably like was a really really good match but like you said a lousy winner you know, it started out pretty hot, you know, really got good spots. But, like, why would you have Dijakovic coming back? You know, with like, his new, like, you remember that the character that he had before? You know, the same attitude, the same intensity. I'm a heel now. And Wes, uh, you know, Wesley, I'm like, eh, do I really want the guy to win? No. After everything that Dominic did, you know, and, you know, the like, he's, like, a taller guy, more powerful. And in the end, you know, we had a bad, I think, good match, but a bad ending. Yeah, I mean, the match... You know, they really wanted all these guys, uh, these two guys in here to shine. Dijak or Dijakovic, whatever. You know, he was he one that was there before. We knew how he was legit. Like I said, new fresh coat of paint. You think, okay, this is the time. I'm going to put the belt on him. He's yes. going to be a, a guy that is going to be like the new day in the sense where you put the belts on him to say, hey, we're a credible, we're legit. You know, whether we think that or not, at least in the ring and, you know, in the WWE they are. Like you hold that belt and you, you you put somebody over you make them legit but they didn't really do that here it was just wesley it was a, this was like a just lots of back and forth lots of just big moves and stuff and it wasn't wesley fighting his style of i gotta be quicker i mean there was parts but he was just sometimes just straight up standing there throwing punches with dijakovic Dijakovic was selling it like he was fighting Keith Lee back in the day. Yeah. No. And I'm like, no, that's not believable. He should be. I mean, there was towards the end where he was laughing, like, go ahead, kick me again. But then he kicks him and then he sells it. And then it's like, oh, OK, well, then what the hell? Did, I mean, it was just too much shit. And I, I'm not watching NXT Weekly, but I guess he's feuding with the uh, what's his name? The Italian guy who works oh, with the Tony D'Angelo. Um, yeah. And then him, his goons came out and then they got interfered and this and that. But. He didn't really do anything, but then Dijakovic just ate like a jumping, spinning kick to the top of the head. One, two, three. And, and I see, mean, it was that just, bothered yeah. me because, you know, he kicked that out of like the best moves from like Wesley. So like, why would you kick that out of everything? And then in the end, you know, you lose. That should be an indication that like he's going to win and he's going to be the new North American champion. I didn't like that at all. I, I, I agree to you. Um, the one thing that like we also got to see is that Dijakovic got one of his fingers dislocated. So it had to be censored. Like, we have the picture right there for you guys, family. But, like, I don't know, Wesley as the North American champion. Do you like it, Paul? To me, it does I mean, not I have... raise any eyebrows. The title is not in good hands, at least just for me. Just because it's not entertaining. Or at least, you know, it doesn't fight like a champion. Yeah, I mean, there's so many guys. The problem is nobody sticks out. Yeah. You have Wesley on the roster. The better version of Wesley is Carmelo Hayes. Yes. Do not. So you... And... You could say maybe even the better version of him is Ricochet. Yes. Do you know what I mean? So you have the, the same There's guy. There's guys that are better. And, and and the guy who did it all before them that might be even better than all of them is AJ Styles, who's injured. You know, so they, they're all the same mold. It's all the same. We're short, but we're super athletic. You know, we can High have flyer. a match. Yeah, we can have a match with a big guy and you can get into it and you can believe it. Even though I'm half his size, you still believe that I have that fight in me that I'm going to win and everything. And 
I don't know. I mean, he does nothing to stick out. At least Dijak has a look. He looks like freaking Mar from Sin City now. They got the the leather jacket the and cold, the glasses yep. and all this shit. I mean, he looks like a badass and then loses here. I come on. See that that's 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 the thing. That's what pisses me off. That's like wait, like I want to change the channel because it's like that was the moment of Dijakovic. You know, all that the bullshit that he went through in the main roster, remember, with like the groove and all of that stuff, changing his name, even his attire. He's back to being the guy that he used to be and you still lose. You still don't are not yep. worthy enough to carry a champion to have goal. I don't know. I didn't like that. You know, and let's go to the match that you said. This is very quick because like you said, this is not even worthy of anything. These titles, the reason that they were born, they were born in the wrong time for the wrong reasons. And they never been able to be held by people that actually make the title worthy. So like it's been always like women that have put together that end that have been in feuds later. So you know like here with Jay Kaden Carter and also like Katana. You know like they going against also like Fallon Henley and Kiana James. This match was just bad. You know terrible. No chemistry. Like no good spots. And in the end, you know it, even the ending was really crappy for me also. Yeah, I mean, this was, I, I'm going to be honest, when this came on, I, I watched, uh, saw, okay, this is coming out, this and that. I mean, I, I saw the little thing in the before I'd get whatever, and I'm like, okay, this, this isn't really going to be a match, right? They're hyping this up for Tuesday. No, then they come out. I went, I made coffee. I, you know, put laundry away. You know what I mean? I did anything else to avoid watching this. I saw the ending where, because they're trying to have the angle, oh, they're the two best friends, they're inseparable, but then, oh, did they cast with each other the match? What's going on? And you have new tag champs. So you said the belts, the version of these belts on the main roster are laughable and nobody cares. And now we're supposed Why to... Why should we care about this? About the about the developmental version? Come on. Yes, exactly. You know, and then like you said, I mean, out of all of them, maybe Kaden Carter, you know, she's, she's good in the ring. You know, she can carry the match. Oh, yeah. She has good, you know, like she's good moves. Like I feel that like she has a lot of talent, but out of the other three... I don't know, I, and and neither, like I said, no, I, nor do I care. And you know, like there's the picture, like that's how they want. You know, like she just, uh, I think it was uh, Kiana James. She's the one that like held, uh, you know, Jaden Carter's like feed. You know, so the one, two, three combination pin. We have new tag champs. Do we really care? Ah, eh, you know, and of course, Bronson Jensen. They all came out, all of that stuff. Uh, I mean, like I said, if you like NXT the way it is right now, if you like developmental, and, and, and they're another be one. This. They're another one that's a joke. I mean, you look at some of the tag teams here in nxt because the main roster desperately needs tag teams yes you think okay who are some people they can call up you know we're going to talk about a match with four tag teams you can say okay pretty deadly gallus the new day are obviously main roster that's you know three tag teams right there chase you and eh, whatever you think about them it, at least it's a tag team but you look at this briggs and jensen and they're like these guys on the main roster that would make me embarrassed to be watching wrestling to see yeah. them they're, they're jokes yeah no absolutely and you know and, and even they were remember nxt uk champions that's yeah. when we knew the brand was going to go down because these I, guys i mean at least were, they were they, okay then now they're just i mean they weren't good then but and they, were at least okay. they were okay there was like a segment that they had the language to go oh great girls you guys were champions yeah yeah what are we gonna uh, celebrate like you know there's not even sense in the segment why would you use no. those two, three minutes of television for that? I don't know. I really didn't care for this. The two out of three balls match, I think it was Carmelo Hayes, Apollo Cruz. It was like just to make Carmelo the main event, the next contender for uh, what is going to be Brom Breaker. I think that yeah, was the I only agree. reason because, you know, Apollo Cruz can give you a good match with anybody. And Carmelo Hayes is just like you said, Wesley, but like 10 or 20 times are better. The match, what, did you like it? To me, yeah, it was it was decent. I, I liked it, and then you know, Daba Kato, Baba Ganoush, you know, Baba Ganoush is back, and and they, I like how they call it. You know, they when he came out, Daba you know, Bo Booker no sold it. I shouldn't say no sold it, but he was like, "Who is this? What's going on? Who is it?" And then Vic had to pause for like a second. He's probably getting a buzz in the headset. Do I say Commander Aziz or do I say Daba Kato? And they're like, "It's and Daba Kato." Daba Kato. No, you, you hear Shane. Shane is back. He's like, it's Dom Kato from the fight, you know, the from fight. The, from uh, Raw Underground. From yeah, Raw Underground. Underground. And then he's like, okay, it's Dom Kato. So I'm thinking, okay, this is where Apollo Crews, because he tapped out. The first thing, he had like a cross face on Apollo. Apollo tapped out. They said, maybe that's smart. So he's not injured, whatever. He can score the second fall, tie this up. You know, that, then you go to sudden death. But Dom Kato came out. He was supposed to take out, uh, what's it, Trick Williams or Trick, yes, whatever yeah, his Trick name Williams, is. Yep. And uh, so he so he took him out, okay, like you thought. But then, boom, freaking. Uh, uh, what's he his starts name? attacking Apollo Cruz. Yeah, 
Carmelo Hayes, you know, boom, just gets him one, two, three, and that's it. And it was a little bit like so. It was, I mean, yeah, it, it, was. It, it was. If you were expecting this to be a long match, you know, something, but I mean, especially it was being two out of three court. falls. Yeah, but like you said, this was done, I think, to really get Carmelo Hayes over because this match, they hyped it up. You know, spoiler alert, Braun Breaker won in the main event, spoiler. But, you know, it's going to be him, Carmelo Hayes. And to me, those are the two, if you don't count the returns of like a Dijakovic or New Day or anybody like that, those are the two biggest stars on NXT. Yes. And that's going to be the matchup at Mania. And Braun's ready for the main event, so I'll say it now. And if I don't say it at the end of the show, I don't. If I say it again, I say it again. But I think Braun calls up, and I think Hayes is going to beat him in that. And Probably that because remember, like you said, like the, and also like the guy that like is the is been, and you know promoted throughout this whole time is been Carmelo Hayes and Bro Breaker. Those are the two main guys. Remember how Carmelo debuted having a match with Adam Cole, then he became the North American champion, lost it, won it all over again. So like you said, yep. like those are the two guys that like have been holding the brand, winning and having like you know great matches and all of that stuff. So yeah, like you said, this was just to put him over and make him like right away the number one contender. You know, like I said, Commander Aziz or Davakato Baba Ganoush, he's just back. And do we really care for it? Not really. You know, let's go to like the fatal four way, you know, for the NXT Tag Team Championships. I was rooting for Gallus or Pretty Deadly. I didn't care for like Chase U, The New Day, absolutely two meaningless teams. There's no reason for me to care for like The New Day because they've been champions so many times and you know for no reason many of those times for absolutely no reason but i wanted pretty deadly just because you know the good days of nxt uk but the the, the fact that Gallus won and in the fashion that they did it i'm happy you know it was a yeah. pretty decent win yeah i mean this was the match that was just like the craziness it was okay let's get the table the big spots the big moves everybody's fighting all over the place this was just like an all-out brawl it wasn't really a match. You can't critique this and say, oh, this was good. Oh, oh, you know, they told this story. There was no story. It was beat the shit out of each other yeah. and this and that. So, I mean, I won't say that that's my favorite type of match, but I'm not going to be like, oh, it sucks either. Like I said, you can't expect a match like this to be good. You, you got to expect it to just be a brawl. And if you like the brawls, then it's good. But, yeah. I mean, hey, Gallus won. That's what I wanted to see. Out of all the guys, you know, pretty deadly. They were in a title contention. They had the belts. They did all that. I think Gallus, you know, helped get them over because they're guys, and pretty deadly as well. But you know, they're guys where, you no, know, he's not in charge anymore. But you always got to, you always go back to that mindset where Vince or you know somebody in charge will see them go. Okay, they look like wrestlers. They're not five foot six, a hundred and you know sixty pounds. No, they're two big, full grown men. They look like they can kick ass. And those are the, that's what we need. That's those are the tag teams we need to be feuding with the New Day or the Viking Raiders or you know tag teams like that because there is only two legit tag teams. You're on the absolutely main roster. right. And you know, like and, and going going on what you just said, you know, Gallus, they're a, they're a, you know a tag team. They've been a tag team forever. They're like everybody knows about them. So why not going with this type of guys? They were champions in NXT UK also. So that that I, I like that. You know, say pretty deadly had their time in the sun. Chase you, nobody gives a damn. Although they were popping a little bit when Andrew had the upper hand, he was going at it, and all that. He almost wins. That was like, and and, that, and that's the one thing you know we'll mention it now because you said about popping. It was a pretty good sized crowd, at least how it looks. WWE is a master at shooting the crowd. Yeah. So maybe it it might not been as big as it looked, but it looked like a pretty big crowd, and they were into it. Yep. You know, they, they, they weren't sitting there on their hands. They weren't like, so. They were like checking their phones. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, they were chanting. You saw the people, you know, the hands in the air. Sometimes WWE pipes in noise, but you can't pipe in people raising their like, hands yeah. in the air and cheering. So, I mean, hey, they were into it. And that helps the show, I think, feel better as well. No, yeah. It, it, I mean, like the, the crowd is, is still good. But like you said, maybe like it may mention something right now about the commentary team. Because Booker T and Big Joseph, they do not make us feel any single thing. It's just boring. It's just like it's not like the way that it used to be. So you know, like um, I mean, we all miss more Ronaldo, the days of Beth Phoenix, Nigel McGuinness. They added something, even not even Beth, but Nigel and Moro. They added something else to it. They made us believe that whatever was happening was actually happening for real. Big yeah. and Bill Booker T fail miserably, really, really bad. Like in uh, in that you know mission. So I mean happy that Gallus won those titles they knew they that had no reason to have those belts so i'm happy on that yeah i mean i think that really the only reason they did the new day thing is maybe 
they are like, yeah, we don't really have anything planned for you on the main roster. And they said, hey, can we go down to NXT? And maybe they thought it would be a good idea to do that. Like I said, the New Day's popular with the WWE fans. The you know, and they have they're like the young bucks. They have their fans, the, the people who love them. They love them no matter what. So maybe they thought it would get some eyes on NXT. No, yeah, you're right. So now, Paul, let's go to like the NXT Women's Championship, a triple threat match. This was probably going to have Mandy Rose involved before she was fired. But what did they do? I like the decision. Hey, who else was with Mandy Rose? Gigi and Jay-Z. Why don't we just put them together? Hey, we don't want to break them up or we want to break them up, but like in a very organic way. What's the organic way? Make them fight for something that they want in common. The title. So that was good, and I like how even they became number one contenders, both of them falling at the same time in the number one contender Royal Rumble match. That was good. The only thing here, like, the only person that would, that felt less important was the person that's holding the belt. At least for me, Roxanne Perez. The whole story is Gigi and Jay-Z going at each other because it seems like the days of toxic attraction are over. Now, you tell me your and, point of view. Yeah, I mean, no, I agree with all of that. I mean... I like Roxanne Perez, but in a match like this, she shines more in a one-on-one -on -one match, yes. I think. In this match, the other two women, they're taller than her. I won't say they're better than her, but... Same I mean, time. They're, yeah, they're taller. They have a more unique look to them. At least, you know, when they come out with the ring attire, the entrance and everything. But, you know, like you said, you, you're focused on them. And I hated this angle of them splitting up because we just talked about how the WWE has no tag team for the men's. The women's tag team division is even worse if that can even be possible. Yeah. And this is the only legit tag team in the entirety of WWE, not NXT, not Raw, everything. This is the only women's tag team that I would actually believe in. Because they've been a group for how long? They've been together. We have a name, you know, Toxic Attraction. That's that's it's that's what it's always been, at least since they've been getting a push. You know, that's what it's always been. So it makes sense. Split them up for what reason? So they can go and lose to a Charlotte Flair or to a Rhea Ripley or a Becky Lynch or Bianca or be, Belair or, or, or be feuding with the Sonya Deville that leads to nothing. Or they beat Natalia that means nothing. Which Natalia is in the Elimination Chamber. Way to go, Natalia. That's but, legit. I, I mean, it's like what. You know what I mean? Why? At least if they were a tag team, they could mean something for a while and do the split on the main roster when you're getting ready to give the Shawn Michaels push. Yes. Not a push that goes and then they fall back down to nothing. So, yes. I mean, Roxanne Perez won. She did the big uh, pop rocks off the top onto uh, JC Jane after, you know, they, oh, let's get the table, let's get the table. And then Gigi got knocked through the table and everything. But I guess because WWE stupid rules, triple threat, no DQ, you know, I don't know. But Yes, I, yeah. I mean, I mean it, it wasn't bad. Two, who would you push, though? Like, you know, out of the EVA, they tell you, Paul, you got to push JC or Gigi. Who will you push? I mean, I think you would push Gigi. Just be, I mean, I think they're both good. They both have a look. But I think Gigi might be the better talker. Yes. So I think you might push her. But I mean, they're both good. But see, they're, none of them are that. None of them, to me, are singles run ready. Becky Lynch is a better talker, better wrestler. Bailey, better talker, better wrestler. Uh... Charlotte Flair, Bianca, same thing. Charlotte. Bianca, same thing. Ray, same thing. So you have at least five, six women on the Asuka, main roster even, that are, you know, even are Asuka, bet, well, you know. Asuka isn't a better talker. But <laughs> you, you know, know what I mean? But like, she's like more like singles like than anybody yeah. else. I mean, so. So you, like, you have at least six women that are better than them. So why put them in a division where they're not going to be able to rise to the top? Put, yeah. You know, it don't make sense to me. I don't get it. But you know, and, hey, and, you know mean, for example, talking about just going a little bit of like off topic because, you know, what is going to be the match at WrestleMania for the belts? Io Sky with Dakota Kai going against Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. That's confirmed. You know what I mean? Why would you put those? Is, is it too, just because they're friends, they're supposed to be a tag team? I don't really like that idea. Because, Maybe, it will well, be better sure. if they go against, you know, Toxic Attraction. It will be more exciting. I'm sure Ronda has something in the contract, though. I got to have the WrestleMania match for the payday. And so they can use them. I got to win a title. Yeah, you know, you know, and all of that. Ronda, yeah, Ronda, after that first run, that first run was great. That should have been it. Because, I mean, this has been a failed experiment. Nobody gave a shit about a single match she's been in since she came back. The most unimportant so. thing in the show is Ronda Rousey. Nobody like gives to... a damn about seeing Ronda Rousey. And she's taken now, going to take a spot. And Shayna don't mean anything either. 
Yeah. I like Shayna. Shayna was legit in NXT. We saw her at the chamber. She choked literally everybody out in that and match. And we saw it, yeah. Yeah, and, we. And you know, she she was a world on fire, house on fire, killing everybody, and then done. And Stop. done. She so, lost to a yeah. Becky Lynch that was pregnant at that time. To me, she means nothing. So yeah. her and a team with with Ronda that means nothing. They're gonna again beat Bailey's flunkies. I hate to say because Dakota Kai and Neo are both talented, but right now they're being portrayed as flunkies. They're not portrayed as anything legit. So, you know, what they beat Candice LeRae a, a week on Raw, you know, every two weeks, they beat again another flunky. That's that's perfect example. And then we can move on to the main event is I think if you a Gigi Dolan and them, you bring them up to the main roster, they're hot for two, three weeks, then they're a, they turn into a Shotzi Blackheart or a Candice LeRae. They just fade into the background. No, yeah, like that's the one thing that you said is like is is there is not consistency with the booking on the main roster and neither is on NXT now. You know, it doesn't matter whether Shawn Michaels or the Triple H, whoever is running WWE it. WWE would almost be, and I heard this idea, and I want to get your opinion on. Even though I said when we went to the main event, but I get want to get your opinion on this. Some people said I heard that WWE would it would maybe almost be better. Now this would throw everything off because what would you even call the show and everything? But just hypothetically. It, maybe they would be better if they just had an hour show for the women. Yeah. Then you, then all the women could be on it. And then they're not trying to fight for spots for the men. Or, oh, Roman Reigns segment went long, so your match gets cut. Or, you know, something like that. And then if the show with the women does good and this and that, then you push them more. If it, the numbers suck and people only watch the Charlotte Flair and Becky Lynch segments, then you know, okay. Well, then I guess those are the only women people actually want to see. But it's just, you know, either give them the time or, or don't. But this... Oh, we'll kind of give you time, but not really. And then we nobody sees you for two months, and then people don't give a shit anymore. It's just it's. Bad. You're right. It's it's very inconsistent, and like you said, I, I would I would much rather see that because then we can see everybody. Like you said, we don't see Shotzi like one month, and then we don't see her in you know, like three months. And you know, like you said, for example, Emma's return. Why do you return to WWE just to lose or just to be an afterthought? Like I'm, I'm much rather mm -hmm. be on Impact then. Same thing with like Jigging yeah, Knox. What are they doing Green. with me? You know, so I agree with you. They should have a run and all those titles should be defended on that show. You know, that way you have a same roster and the same structure with the, you do with the men and you have it with the women. And then you have a main event mm -hmm. scene that can be like Charlotte. Yeah, and then now they, uh, they wouldn't have their own pay-per-views. You know, Royal Rumble, they can have a match or WrestleMania, they can have their matches. But like just for the regular weekly yeah, show. Yeah, just because have their like own you show. said, they're five for spots. That's what you said. One week, yes. One week, no. So absolutely agree with you. And Roxanne Perez, She's a great, she's great. I love the energy. I love everything that she tries to do. But again, matches like this, she gets completely overshadowed. She becomes an afterthought. The fact that she won it just because she's not going to drop that belt right after she won it. Maybe and now Alba Fire and also Isla Donna are a tag team. After their feuding, they become friends at the, same, the next day. That to me, you know, absolutely bad. Cora J needs to get this title. Because out of everybody, the only one that remains heel and at least is a hit heel. Good hit heel Cora J. They should have that view. There's animosity between them. There's history right there. Do that. The main event, Paul, you know, cage match. Grayson Waller tries as much as he can. He is not good. I do not believe that this guy can be NXT champion because of like he his promo is, is weak. And as a wrestler, he is average. And he's not going to be able to beat a Braun Breaker. Like you said, he's ready to be even main event or the main roster, at least for me. Yeah, he's not better than, and these are just part-timers that can talk better than him and that can wrestle better than him, Logan Paul and Pat McAfee. Yes. yes. And I'm not trying to shit on this kid because obviously he can wrestle circles around me and whatever. But you have Shawn Michaels and other people saying, oh, this kid is amazing. This kid, oh, man, they put him over like he's the freaking the Luthez, you know, reborn. No. The, the promo is okay because he's super annoying and he gets under your skin because they always push him. He beats guys that you want to see beat him. Yes. You know, and then he gets these matches and you think, okay, you know, he gets under the champion's skin and all oh, leading up to this match. You think, okay, but the one thing I liked about this match, escaping the cage didn't mean jack all the shit. You had to pin the guy in the ring or submit whatever. You know, that was legit. So then there was no bullshit. Oh, Waller escapes, nothing like that. But I mean, it. The match itself I thought was all right, but yeah, I agree with you. They keep saying that this guy's going to be so legit, he's going to get a big push. No. If, if if it was his time, it would be him at, you know, NXT. 
in a, in a WrestleMania weekend against Carmelo Hayes or whatever it's going to be. It wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be here in this match at Vengeance Day. But I mean, he the, the main thing here is he's cocky. He he gets the upper hand on Braun. He starts talking shit, or he's like, no, I got to go for my social media clip. The big moment. He climbs up to the top, thinking he's Joe Cool, and he's gonna go for a big dive like he did before at the last. What was that? A War Games show? Or yeah. What was it? No, it was. Then, uh, uh, no, it wasn't War Games, but it was like the other pay per view. Yeah, it was like I, I don't even remember what. Yeah, it they was. had some kind. Of, it was like the old versus the new of NXT. You know. Oh the yeah. Old oh no. Yeah, that was War guys. Games. Yes, that was yeah, the NXT, the new he, generation against yeah, the old NXT. And he yes. jumped off the top and everything. Uh, but. You know, so he goes kind of for the same move. Braun catches him up there, big superplex. I thought that was going to be the pin, but, you know, Braun sells it a little bit. Then he kind of gets up, and then he does a little trash talking of his own. And then, boom, I think it was just a big spear. One, two, three, yep. pinned him. And, you know, again, you know, nobody thought Braun was going to lose this. I thought, you know, maybe he could because, you know, the way that they were booking it with Wesley and all that other shit, I thought, hey, man, you don't know. Shawn Michaels wax to this guy. He loves him. You know, I don't know what's up with Hicken's bottom. Maybe uh, uh, he's in Hicken's bottom. I don't know, but uh, it, it's freaking. He, Michaels loves the guy, and I don't know. I don't see him being champion, so I'm glad he didn't win. But what do you do with him? What does he do on the main roster? He reminds me of like a more cocky, annoying version of the Miz. Yeah, no, that's what it is. It is it's just you just have a guy like that, and what you should do is like because Johnny Gargano is back cashed in on that remember like what was the guy that like yeah. retired or took and Johnny Gargano out of the NXT world it yeah was that was the way to try to get him heat and yeah. like I, that that's the main problem with all these guys WWE has so many people on the roster and what we see just started the program here there's so many guys that are just a carbon copy of the same yes all the play-by-play -play announcers are a carbon copy of Michael Cole so it's not even the wrestlers the announcers are copies of each other it's just it is because, for example, you have like JD McDonald, you have it like that hasn't been featured here. You have Tyler Bate that just came back. You know, right? That could be another guy that would potentially challenge again, Breaker, or a, or something, you know, that. You got Axiom or Axiom, you know, you have like a him, but like you don't use them properly and you got to use Grayson Waller that like out of all the guys, you know, McDonald was a good challenger. Even uh, Walker was better. So like you had a lot of guys that could be potentially be a threat. And not Waller. So for me, uh, maybe Carmelo Hayes, like you said, the next time that we're going to see NXT is going to be in Stand and Deliver. So that will be, I'm thinking that the match will take place there. And like you said, your prediction, I think I'm going to agree with that. He is going to become the new NXT champion and then Braun Breaker will become the next call-up for the main roster. So that's what we have. That's how the show ended. And family, thank you very much to every single one of you. I feel that, you know, this NXT is just, again, feels developmental. Unfortunately, they have not been able to return to what we saw before, to the NXT that we all love, no. that we and, all and whack, the main... that we all praise, that, you know, like stole the show so many times, way better than the main roster. Now it just feels less, way below the main roster, Paul. Yeah, and I, I think the reason for that is, is, is because now it is developmental. When it first started, it was developmental. Yes, the FCU or whatever it was and all that. Or, yeah, Florida Championship Wrestling. But, uh, or FCW, yeah. But it was just like... Nah, but Triple H, he was signing a lot of indie guys that were... Yes. All, Kevin Owens didn't need training. Sami Zayn didn't need training. Cesaro, you know, all these guys he was bringing in, they didn't need no training. They didn't need to be whatever. So, they... It, that's why the show felt legit, but now like a, a Grayson Waller or somebody like the Briggs and Jensen or the Creed brothers, people like that. Those are the ones that it's like they're green as grass and you got to train them. Now yes. the Axioms and Gallus, they had to have experience and stuff, but they have to have somebody to wrestle. And if they're wrestling somebody that's inexperienced, the match ain't going to be that all that good. And like you said, the whole it just feels developmental besides a certain handful of guys. I think Braun Breaker and Carmelo Hayes are two of them. And that's, you know, we're going to end it on that. At least I'm going to end it on that and saying, like, at least, you know, NXT, their main event guys are good. And in that way, they're in good hands. But, yeah, this, you don't watch this show if you're looking for, like, the best wrestling. This is definitely, like, a deep cut. Oh, I want to see everything WWE has to offer in their developmental and everything. Yes, absolutely. So, family, thank you so very much for every single all the views and comments, don't forget, subscribe to all the social media. Paul is going to tell you right there, they're down below. So please help us out. Subscribe. What are you waiting for? 
you know, don't be a noob, don't be a dumbass and help us out. So like Paul, remind everybody where can they find us? Yeah, you know, don't be a Dijakovic and get pinned, you know, right yeah, away. Don't, don't get like, your, so, yeah. your finger dislocated. Yeah, 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 don't be like that, you know, unless it's getting dislocated by clicking all the links below. That's right. That's Rope Break on Facebook, DOG Rope Break on Twitter, Original Rope Break on Instagram, Twitch, and TikTok. And, of course, right here on YouTube, the home of the number one podcast in the YouTube wrestling community, the Original Rope Break. And you and me have one more thing that is left to say, and that is... Uh, 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 uh,